So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make this one multi-purpose jig that would take the place of several others. So to start with, it's a straight edge jig. If you do not have a joiner, you can make perfect glue joints using this sled. It's also a tapering jig, perfect for one piece or two piece tapered legs. It can also cut about any angle that you would like. Even the super acute miters like 60, 70, 80 degrees that our miter sauce cannot cut. You can cut tons of different shapes like triangles and octagons, or use this as a cross cut sled, a thin rip sled, or even cut half flaps and notches. So as you can see, this jig has countless uses. So let me show you how to make this thing. I will be showing you step by step and giving you all the measurements along the way. But if you're a plans in the hand type of person, I'll throw a link in the description to my Etsy shop. Head over there and pick up a set. Let's get started. Now to start off for this jig, I'm actually just going to use this piece of scrap wood that I have. It's three quarters of an inch, 26 inches long. It's a little over uh, 12 inches wide. I think it's like 13 and a half, but I'm going to rip this down to 12 inches. But we'll also be needing a one inch strip that is the same length as this. The piece that I cut off of this, I'm actually going to keep and rerun through it one inch. The most important part of this jig is going to be having a straight edge. So either make sure that one edge is perfectly straight or even better, if you can find one with a manufactured edge, you pretty much guarantee that it's going to be straight. So with our two pieces cut, I'm going to set this little one inch strip to the side for now. And let's go ahead and get some marks on this. I'm just going to take a square and divide this into three different sections. Since this board is 26 inches long, that is going to make our three different sections at eight and five eighths. I'm just going to take my square and mark my board. Then while I have the square on, I'm going to go ahead and mark one inch in on all sides. I'll be removing the material in the middle with a router, and this will actually be my tracks for my support boards. Let's head over to the router. With our guide markings on the bottom of the board, it's time to make our first router pass at 3 8 inch deep using a half inch straight bit. And that will allow the bolt head to inset into this groove. Make sure to lock in your router, or you'll end up routing through your table like I did. A little bit of Bondo, take care of it. So now it's time to route out some quarter inch grooves in the center of this half inch groove. And this is gonna allow for this bolt head to slide back and forth. And this time I'll be setting my depth to actually go all the way through the board. And then we'll just repeat this for both sides. Now we are ready for that one inch strip. And we're going to attach it to our outside edge. One thing we want to make sure of is that it does not stick out past this edge. It needs to be perfectly square with the baseboard. That way it'll be perfectly square with the fence. So to attach this backboard to the base, I'm gonna be using some wood glue. I'm also gonna throw some CA glue in there just to speed things up a little bit. So now we need two boards that are three inch by eight inch to use as our clamping boards. They will be the boards that will be holding our toggle clamps in place. So once we have our two boards cut the size, next we're just gonna drill a quarter inch hole in the center of each board. Then attach our toggle clamps to our clamp boards. Now these toggle clamps are just some that I had around here, but I'm almost positive that I picked these up off of Amazon for pretty cheap. So again, I'll throw a link in the description for these as well. So to install these toggle clamps, I'm going to be measuring 3 8 in from the sides and the front on both sides. And then we'll line these clamps up with those measurements. And you can install these with the screws that actually come with the clamps if your clamps come with screws. And if not, you can use any 3 quarter inch screw. And we'll just repeat this process for the right hand side and for our second board. All right, so now that these are made up, let's go ahead and attach these to our board. I'm gonna start out by taking a small washer, putting it on my boat. Then I'll be running the boat through the back. That's where our half inch track is at. And we'll make sure it slides. And we'll just set this right on top and then apply our knob. This is what it should look like at this point. You're ready to use this for several things without changing anything at all. So let me show you a couple things that you can do with just this. So that you do not have a joiner and you need a straight edge on one side of a board. Let's say it's live edge let's say it's something like this i've kind of over exaggerated this board just by taking some chunks out of it but it actually is just rough cut on the edges you can actually still see the saw marks so whenever you go to line these up it will not make a joint that is suitable for joining so let me show you how to fix that real quick using this jig and you won't even need a joiner. So since our bottom board is 12 inches wide, that's what we'll set our fence to. And when using this jig to get a joint edge, you'll allow overhang on one edge of your board, just enough to get rid of any type of bow or twist. Then you will lock down your clamp boards and then your clamps. 
and then you'll simply remove the board from the jig and then repeat this process with the board that you're going to be joining to. Okay, so we started out with a board that matched up like this and we had put a joint edge on one side. So now it matches up like this, a perfect glue joint. And now to get a perfect edge on the opposite side, we'll just slide our fence into the desired width, place our new square edge against the fence and simply cut off the uneven edge. So with that being done, now we have a perfect glue joint on both sides and you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on a joiner. So now let me show you some other cool stuff that this thing can do. We'll start off with setting it up as a taper jig. But let's say that you want to make a nice tapered leg out of some square stock. So all that you'd have to do is line the end of your board up with the edge of your jig where you would like your taper to start and then align the edge of your board up with the edge of your jig where you want your taper to end. So in this case, I'll be starting my taper at a quarter of an inch and then ending it 12 inches up the board. So just a tip for tapering thicker boards, if you leave your clamp board loose and then tighten it up afterwards, it'll be a lot easier to clamp it into place and you would not have to worry about damaging your jig. And let's say that you wanted a tapered two piece, three quarter inch leg. So let's talk about some non-traditional uses now. Let's say that we wanna cut 45s. So all that you would have to do is set your clamps to 45 degrees, hold those down, and if you actually wanted to cut to it once, you could do it. We have perfect 45s. But what if we want super acute angles, like angles that our miter saws won't cut? Let's say something like 70 degrees. Let me show you how to make that cut. So let's say that we're cutting a 70 degree miter corner. That means it would be 35 degrees per side. We'll actually just set this up just like we did for our 45s, except we're setting it up for 35. And there's a super simple 70 degree miter. And you could actually, if you wanted to bevel the saw, you could have super acute miter bevels. So just an idea, but I think it's pretty sweet. And you can even set it up to make some pretty awesome shapes that would be hard to make on anything else. Or even if you wanted a four sided tapered leg. and even a cross cut slab for cleaning up jagged edges or making multiple cuts or making those super thin cuts that you do not want to put against your fence because of kickback. And if you want to cut half laps or notches, you can do it one blade thickness at a time or put on a dado stack. And if you do not have a miter gauge or at least an accurate one, you can even cut tenons using this jig. And honestly, those are just the things that I could think of just right out the top of my head. I've even thought about trying to figure out a way to cut perfect circles without actually having to put a hole in the material. If you can think of any other uses for this thing, drop it down to the comments and share it with everybody. But as is, and as cheap as it is to make this thing, you really can't go wrong and you can get rid of some of those old jigs.